Izzy Cundy. I'm very excited today because we have one of the all-time pop greats with us to make a big announcement. Do you want to introduce him? Well, we do. We have one of my all-time icon favourite people in all the wide, wide world. It is the one and only Boy George. Boy George, hello. How are you doing? I'm good, actually, yeah. Um, I'm excited about... I'm just excited to be dressed up. <laughs> you look amazing. If you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook or Twitter, you can see it's one of the iconic Culture Club hats, which is great. And look, boy, I want to talk to you about your time in lockdown. But first, let's start with the positive news, OK? The positive news is as long as London doesn't move into some sort of lockdown, you are going to be back on stage at the SSE Arena in Wembley on December the 19th. Tell me everything. Well, you know, as it as it stands, we are allowed to have, I think, a thousand human beings and uh, that's all being done really safely. And um, if, if we don't have some audience, we'll still do the stream. So we're going to stream it live from the SSC Arena on the 19th. And it would be a nice added bonus to have some peopleoids, but yes. we're going to do it anyway, whatever happens. I mean, listen, just even rehearsing is going to be, we start on Monday. I'm so excited about rehearsing, even though I'm going to be behind plexiglass. <laughs> Probably best for everyone else. But um, I'm excited about just even rehearsing. So even if we rehearse and don't play, you know, that's something. But um, I didn't realise at the beginning of this, you know, this lockdown, right at the start, you know, I came back from Australia. I just, you know, was doing The Voice. And I didn't even think about how it was going to affect me. Because I thought, oh, OK, you know, and then suddenly as the months went by, I suddenly realised I'm not working. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's been devastating for people in the arts and entertainment industry, hasn't it, Lizzie, in, in so many ways. But look, we will definitely be there, Lizzie, in one form or another, because the great thing is, is that, as you say, you are able to stream it from anywhere in the world. And there's a very nice touch, isn't there, Lizzie, which is uh, uh, about key workers being able to get free access to this show. Yeah, with key workers being able to get access to the show, this is what we need after the year we all have had. This is some real a good feel factor show that I was so grateful to hear about. And lovely George's um, manager, who I've got a little crush on, I have to say, PK, um, <laughs> who is really more famous than all of us at the minute and his housewives of Beverly Hills. He told me this news and I so rejoiced. George because I thought at last we've got some good news and we need to feel good and to hear your beautiful voice is what we need to hear and see oh, and it will it be you. different though George to kind of connect to those at home because this is a total different kind of concert for you I think that you know the challenge is to I mean listen whenever you do a show the challenge is always to concentrate on what you're there for look at the audience don't get distracted you know, don't worry about what's going on around you. Look forward. That's, you know, the main thing. Um, and obviously, it's going to be interesting because obviously there won't be that many people there. But <laughs> I just think that, I think it's going to be, listen, if it happens, it's going to be a magical night. Yeah. One way or the other, because, you know, it, it's going to feel like kind of, it's going to feel quite dangerous in a way. And yeah. so, like, you know, should we be doing this? Is this actually allowed? It yeah. just doesn't feel real yet. So... Until I walk onto that stage, mm. you know, and, and the band starts playing, I'm like, yeah. is this actually happening? But, you know, it's uh, the challenge is, you know, whenever you do a show, all you're really concerned with is, is connecting emotionally with the people watching or listening. And actually, you know, some people have a bit of a struggle with the streaming thing. TV's live streaming. YouTube yeah. live streaming. This is, it's all live streaming. It's what we do all the time. And you Everybody can get and you can get difficult thing. Yeah, and you, you know it's not it's so easy. And you can get the stream up on your big TV now to make it almost like a movie experience, which is really exciting. And I think we are having to experiment with these different ways of ex uh, with viewing entertainment now as a necessity. I, I guess yes. even though I miss concerts more than anything. I mean, George, what what has been your experience like in lockdown? How have you coped with? Uh, the relative isolation because you are someone who is a performer and 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 thrives on being on stage well you know it's interesting i think the, the biggest challenge has been the sort of removal of spontaneity because one thing i've realized yes. is, i mean i live mm -hmm. alone so you know i like my own company i like spending time with myself but 
having that option to pop out and have a coffee with someone or meet someone yeah. for a walk when that's removed you know that's when it starts to become difficult you think oh my god i mean some beautiful things happened in lockdown one of my friends was baking me sourdough and delivering it it was so sweet i was so excited <laughs> <laughs> to get homemade sourdough with the masks on passing over in the street with gloves on it was just you know it brought out a kind of um quite Community a sweetness spirit yeah you know and uh, you know you just you know, it was, um, I think, yeah, that was the main thing, just sort of the spontaneity. But at first, I think I rallied against it a little bit. I was a little bit kind of like, a little bit upset about it, a bit depressed to start with. And then I just mm. thought, right, you know, you've got a roof over your head. You're lucky. You you know, you don't necessarily have to work to so shut up and get on with it. And that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I used the time to be creative. And I've done some incredible things. I've done some things that I may not have done had this not happened, you know, I've just made a record with Tony Visconti, yes. over, you know, and we've managed to do that without meeting. And it's just all the things that I've done creatively have sort of somehow come together because there's been this kind of really um, strong will with everybody to sort of try and get things done. So I've actually achieved a lot, even though I haven't done physically done that much. You well, know? I guess the great I, thing about your job is that you can record anywhere in the world now because of all of the developments in technology. Absolutely. And, you know, um, sort of, I think at first it was the struggle to find the motivation to do things. That was the hard thing. It was like, there's something about being lazy that can become, I don't know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> when I start lying around, I start to really enjoy it. I'm like, oh, I don't have to work ever again, but now I'm excited about... Well, at least doing... you're not doing what Lizzie Cundy's doing, which is posting uh, lots of scantily clad pictures with masks uh, protecting <laughs> her modesty. Nothing wrong with that, right, George? Nothing wrong <laughs> well, with that. Well, I think that. that, you know, I always say if, if, I, if I had it to flaunt, I would be flaunting it. <laughs> <laughs> good, good answer. But, George, I've got to ask you this. Is it true there is a movie being made about your life and could be a possible Harry Styles playing the young boy, oh, George. Good choice. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether that will happen. You know, I know that I know that um, Harry is one of the people that has been approached or yeah. has been considered. And I know that um, Harry is, you know, embarking on an acting career. So, you know, uh, I think the producers did look at him and I'm not sure whether that will actually happen. He would you know, be I think so be a great good. John he would be, be so great good. John Moss. I think. No, I think I think I think Harry Styles would be so good because he encapsulates uh that sort of androgynous spirit uh that you first brought to the world, I guess, in the eighties. Yeah, you know what? At the end of the day, acting is it's such a craft, isn't it? You know, I mean mm -hmm. it's such a craft and it would be I think it's very challenging to play someone, you know, like me. Mm. Because I think that people, <laughs> to say, I think most people have completely wrong idea of who I am and what I am. And, you know, a lot of the stuff about me is kind of, sort of weird, mythical rubbish. You know what I mean? It's like what people, do you think is the biggest misconception about you? That I'm not nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, actually. Oh, no, no, I know that. No, I think people... Well, I, think people you, I think people... I think people... I don't know what people, listen, you know what? I meet people all the time who I've never met before in my life and they're so lovely to me. And that's the thing about the public. You know, sometimes I'm out in the street and someone will say something really nice to me or say hello to me. And my friends will say, do you know that person? And I'll say, no, I've never seen him before in my life. You know, just <laughs> complete and out of strangers come up and say, oh, I love you. And it's really a nice thing, you know. And then equally, I suppose, being in the public eye, as, as you all know yourselves, there's just some people who just don't like you. Yes. I don't know why. They don't like the way you wear your hat. They don't like the fact that you've got a mask on your boobs. I don't know. They don't like some of the things that Sam writes. It's just one of the sort of things that comes with fame is that you have to put up with people misunderstanding you, getting you completely wrong, taking everything you say literally. You know, people don't realise I'm a Gemini. Well, I'll say five minutes ago, I'm over it. <laughs> well, Lizzie and I... I don't think that anymore. You know, I'm terrible. I'm we, terrible. Well, Lizzie and I, we've met them all. And, George, I can honestly say you were one of the kindest and, and most generous uh, men oh. in entertainment. So it is so brilliant to see you back on stage. Uh, I have to say, 
It's Coach Club Rainbow in the Dark, December the 19th, the SSE Arena in Wembley, London. There's only a very small number of physical tickets available, but you are able to stream it live, which is incredibly exciting. Uh, you can get more information by visiting Ticketmaster or the SSE Arena Wembley on google in fact i've got an actual address i've got an actual address lizzie this is exciting ticketmaster.co.uk forward slash culture club boy george lizzie candy thank you so much for being here